Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Nicholas and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm finally reviewing a book I've probably read three times already, but Anxiety. So what is this much read book? Namely, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Warnings for cheating, rocky high school drama, off-screen age gap, and an abortion. Mariko Tamaki, who was also the writer on This One Summer, art by her cousin Jillian Tamaki, is a Toronto writer, playwright, activist, and performer. More new to the channel, artist Rosemary Valero O'Connell is... According to Goodreads, a Minneapolis-born, Zaragoza-raised cartoonist and illustrator with a BFA in comic art from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me was published by First Second on May 7th, 2019 and was nominated for the Michael L. Prince Award 2020, Goodreads Choice Award 2019, and won Dean Myers Award 2020. VLA Graphic Novel Diversity Award for Youth Honor 2019 and several Eisner Awards in 2020. The Goodreads description is as follows. All Freddie Riley wants is for Laura Dean to stop breaking up with her. The day they got together was the best one of Freddie's life, but nothing made sense since. Laura Dean is popular, funny, and so cute, but she can be really thoughtless, even mean. Their on-again, off-again relationship has Freddy's head spinning, and Freddy's friends can't understand why she keeps going back. When Freddy consults the services of a local mystic, the mysterious seek her, she isn't thrilled with the advice she receives, but something's got to give. Freddy's heart is breaking in slow motion, and she may be about to lose her best very best friend, as well as her last shred of self-respect. Fortunately for Freddy, there are new friends and the insight of advice columnist Anne, Anna Weiss to help her through being a teenager in love. Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell bring to life a sweet and spirited tale of young love that asks us to consider what happens when we ditch the toxic relationship we crave to embrace the healthy ones we need. The art, as almost everyone who has read this book does mention, is very, very good. My only negative feelings is from everyone doing the same black and white plus one color thing, or at least everyone in queer comics, is this a fun home thing? Question mark. So it does feel a bit one note, but it's also used so much because, yes, it's very nice. I'm not sure why such a light pink color was that one other color, though. The more I overthink it, the less I like it. But still, the character designs, frames, and page layouts are all very nice and keep things very enjoyable. People who appear to be women are almost everyone in this series? Question mark. Well, I don't think it's important to go into super detail with the identities of each of the side characters. I guess I would have liked them to be a bit more fleshed out. Or maybe I need to continue to find better ways to talk about these things. Otherwise, I think that a lot of the work is done visually to depict a very diverse group of friends along lines of gender, presentation, race, body type, and sexuality. I didn't get any people mixed up. While I do think that having so many different kinds of friends who generally seem to be in better places in their relationships does act as a pretty good counterpoint to the general badness of the Laura Dean and Freddie relationship, that said, Laura Dean being the most front and center bi, or at least playing with bi person, does rub me the wrong way. The idea that bi slash pan people are cheaters or can't be dependable is a trope that needs to die yesterday. I also felt like she just wasn't that well developed. What do we know about Laura Dean? She's quote cool, or at least desperate for attention. Her mother is never around, and an alcoholic, which again feels like a trope rather than meaningful to anything. Why don't the characters just dip their toes into polyamory? More serious than the on-again, off-again romantic drama, the abortion subplot was handled really well, in my humble opinion. The impregnator could have possibly been more judged, but that kind of fell outside of the focus of the book, I think, so I wasn't too upset, although mileage may vary. Racial diversity was present, although not the focus of the book. This is one of the strong points of more ensemble casts although this story was still very focused on Freddy's narrative. Class representation was small, but a huge improvement over this one summer, where all the townies were incredibly crude. Vi, a character that Freddy keeps running into throughout the story, briefly touches on how she works so many jobs in order to afford college. 
Did I mention the rep was small? That said, Vi is a pillar of maturity and strength and good choices, so there's that. Ability and disability aren't really touched on, I don't think. And so, here we are. I finally put my thoughts out. While I generally enjoyed the book, I do think it's a bit overhyped. And balancing out everything I liked and didn't like, I think I shall be rating this book 3 out of 5 stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13 also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.